Hi, we're here at the Hay Literary Festival uh, using the DEC 2050 Energy Calculator to answer questions about uh, future use and production of energy. Uh, I'm here with uh, Richard and David from DEC and from National Grid. Now, here's a question that's been sent in. What will be the role of cities in delivering our future energy systems, passive consumers or active participants? Cities, gents. Well, so cities have got a huge amount of people in them, and so they're real focal points for energy demand. And I think one of the challenges we have is that a lot of our cities have been built over particularly long periods of time. So they have a huge diversity of housing stock, and it requires different techniques to deal with the management of that energy. So take insulation. Some homes will need an awful lot of it. Some homes will need very, very little. So getting that right at city scale over the whole of that population is going to be a really, really big challenge. I think the interesting one, though, for me is the um, recent announcements on new cities and take the, the proposed development at Ebbsfleet. That provides a real opportunity to trial some of the new smart grid technologies, really efficient home heating, and some of the other stuff that we could put into a really uh, densely populated area and see mm -hmm. how we get on. What's a smart grid technology? The rest of what you said I followed. <laughs> okay, so this is about automation, actually. So to, to the point of the question, this is about getting more automation, both within the energy networks themselves, but also at the home level um, and between appliances and really understanding how energy is used at the home level, but not asking you or I to think about that too much. I sure. mean, that, that would be too much of a behavioural change. So the smart grid in its biggest sense is about building some automation in there to allow these things to switch themselves on and off according to energy price signals or, or something similar. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I want to say a positive thing and then a word of caution. So uh, buildings do consume at least a third of our, our energy. So uh, cities, loads of buildings, there's a key role there to uh, take part in saving energy through building insulation, smarter heating controls as well, mm -hmm. turning down the thermostat in a smart way. You can still be comfortable, but it can save a lot of energy. So there's a big role there, but there's also a delusion out there that people imagine that cities could power themselves. And the fact is that throughout time, cities have always depended on the rest of the world. They've depended on the countryside for food, and they've depended on mines and so forth for fossil fuels. And in the future, that will still be the case. Realistically, there's no way you're going to be able to get the demand of a city down to the level such that it can completely power itself on its own local renewables. Yes, you can have some waste to energy facilities, mm. but actually cities need to talk very politely to the rest of the world mm. because they're going to need to get their energy from the, rest, uh, from mm -hmm. the countryside still. In the finite amount of space, I live in London, right? Finite amount of space, a lot of people trying to live there, and a, a huge amount of development. Houses are constantly being worked on, extended and expanded and all the rest mm. of it. Is there something you could do in terms of uh, micro-generation uh, insulation requirements on any of those developments that would help this along, or is that not financially sensible. I mean, insulation's by and large pretty cheap uh, and pretty easy to fit. Uh, I think for most of us, it's a, a let's get on and do it kind of thing, really. There's a bit of building aesthetics. If it's the sort of insulation you have to fit on the outside of a house um, or if you put it on the inside walls, you've, you've got a choice to make around. How does it look? How does it feel at your home level? But there's also, you know, take London as an example, there's a huge number of schools, hospitals, offices, all of those sorts of places, commercial premises, where you could put solar, thermal sure. uh, uh, for, for water heating, uh, uh, or photovoltaic for electricity, uh, as well as all these sort of insulation things, and really make those buildings much, much more efficient. Yeah, yeah. top of my list is definitely the insulation. It can be very cost effective. It mm -hmm. uh, can uh, pay for itself within just a year or two. Yeah. Uh, and so whenever you're getting some sort of w building work done on the house or redecorating, it's a, a chance to get a good builder who knows what they're doing uh, yeah. to put some extra insulation on the inside or, uh, or the Absolutely. outside Absolutely. And just quickly, um, because of population density in cities, people always think of cities as being dirty things, belching out stuff. But actually, in terms of transport and moving people around, they can be quite efficient, can't they? Because people are covering shorter distances. It's easier to put infra transport infrastructure in that a lot of people can use. That's absolutely right. If you look per person, how much energy is being used in a city, it's less than uh, typical people in the countryside. Cities are relatively efficient mm. places. I knew it was country folks' fault. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed.